In this video, I'm going to get back to the innovation part of this channel. About a month ago, I bought a small beaver wind turbine for $100 and placed it on top of the barn. And now I just added a couple of simple circuits to help gain better control of it and to help improve its performance. One circuit is I added some switching so I can turn this turbine off. I can shut it right down now. The other circuit is to automatically stop that charge controller from drawing power off the battery when the wind turbine isn't producing any power. And then at the end of this video, I can show a little bit of what I got going on with my experimental wind turbine that you see in the background. Well, it's sunny and clear now. I'm getting a little bit of wind. Now I'm going to head into the barn lab to where I have my controls for this wind turbine set up. And I'm going to switch off this wind turbine. This is my wind turbine set up and I put in place here a brake from a switch. This is the current that's going into the battery right now. And then when I want to shut the wind turbine off, I can just flip the switch and it drops down. And the six milliamps is what this wind controller is using just off the battery in standby mode. So, so our wind turbine has come to almost a stop, moving a little bit in the wind. That one over there is going pretty good. But with the brake on, it just kind of slowly turns because it's being shorted out. Then with the brake on, I can safely disconnect the wind controller without damaging it. You don't want to disconnect this when there's current flowing through it. Right now it's drawing that six milliamps in standby mode off the battery. And now I can just disconnect it. And see, yeah, the light went out. It's now completely disconnected. Drawing no current on the battery. I have the wind controller connected up again, drawing that six milliamps. I have this meter over here just because of the glare of the window. And now I'll take the brake off, switch that off. And we'll wait for the wind to kick in. Must be starting now. Takes a while for that wind turbine to get up to speed. I think the wind we have today is anywhere 10 to 15 miles per hour. And right around one amp is about, I think, 10 miles per hour is what we had when I first tested it. So we have some charging going on again. Must be around 10 miles per hour or more. That's probably around 15 or a little better. Well, the battery is charged up and it's starting to unload. So I'm going to switch us off, put the brake on again, and I'll tell you a little bit about this switch. And then if I don't want any drain on that battery at all, I can just disconnect my weight go, weight go connector and it drops to zero. Now I'll go over this switch that I'm using for a break. This is a double pole single throw switch and I have the top two jumped over so they're connected together and then each one of these lines comes from the wind turbine and then back into the wind controller. Now this is just something I picked up at Home Depot. I think every wind turbine usually comes with this or should have something like this so you can shut the power off coming from the wind turbine and they'll break it, they'll short it together and bring the rotor to a stop or just a slow turn. And like I said, I got there from Home Depot. This is the box it came in. See that the glare is so bad right here because I'm in front of the window. And this is the schematic 
right here I have drawn out. Now this is, the switch is open, so it's like in the off position. Then when I close it, these are all short together. It won't deliver any power to the controller anymore. So that's how that works. Simple enough. Uh, I think it costs 750 for this uh, switch, I think, from Home Depot. That's really, that's all it took. Next, I'm going to show a circuit I've been working on to prevent the wind controller from drawing current out of the battery when there's no wind blowing and the wind turbine isn't producing electricity and everything will still be hooked up. What I did is I added some capacitance into the circuit. I added two filter capacitors and I added a diode that'll prevent current from going back out of the battery. Now, what will happen is Current will come from the wind turbine. I got the brake on right now, so that's why everything is off. It'll go into the wind controller, but it's not on regulating anything yet. And what it'll do, it'll charge up these capacitors first. And when these capacitors reach the right amount of voltage, the light will come on on the wind controller. And then it's going to be sending current through this diode into the battery. Right now we got zero current going into it. I'm gonna flip the switch on so the wind turbine does come on. And I have this meter connected up to these capacitors. And when that, see, the light just came on. So the regulator or the controller is on now. And we are charging current now. 1.1 amps. So we got current flowing into the battery. And everything is still working. Now I'm not saying anybody should copy this circuit yet. I'm just experimenting with it. One thing that I noticed with this uh, diode in the circuit, it has a voltage drop here. So this will start unloading at a different voltage than the battery. So the battery is going to be a little bit less voltage than what these capacitors are. Well, I guess it's not generating that much right now. But I'll go ahead and shut this off now. And this will drain the capacitors down and then shut off by itself. I'll shut the wind turbine off. And it'll take a while to drain these capacitors down. Current going into zero now. This is the voltage on the capacitors is dropping. See, so it's getting dimmer. And it went out right around nine and a half volts. So now everything is off. This isn't drawing any current out of the battery. This diode is preventing that. And then, let's say I want to turn this back on again. I can just turn the brake back on, or off. Brake is off. That's the current battery voltage. Current going in. And I thought it was starting to unload. It was unloading back up here. You can see it coming on. See, it's unloading lower than it was before. It's like 13, 13 and a half volts around there. I think before when we were testing it with just the circuit here, I think it was like 13.7. So it's a little bit lower than before. So that's why I'm saying, I don't know if anybody should copy this. I don't know what effect that will have on the battery if it might not get charged up enough or something. But... Everything is working. The voltage is just a little bit lower now on the battery as it's unloading. Current coming in. And this is the schematic of what's going on here. So I showed the break here, the double pull, single throw switch. So let's just continue this down over here. And this is what I added in over here. Here are the filter capacitors and the diode and the battery. 
So what's happening, you know, it's charging up the capacitor first, and that reached a certain voltage. It'll just continue on into the battery. This uh, controller needs that voltage to sense what it needs to do. If you just try the diode without the capacitor, this won't work because it needs that little bit of voltage registering on this controller in order for that controller to work. Everything is fully charged. That's when you really don't even need the wind turbine on. Batteries charged and it's just unloading. So I think I'll, I'll just shut this off. No current going in. Battery or the voltage on the capacitors is now dropping. Now these capacitors are hooked in parallel, and each one is twenty-eight thousand microfarads. So we got twice that there. I tried one by itself to begin with, but when the charge controller started to unload, it was just blinking, blinking really, really fast. So I increased it and that slowed the blinking down. I didn't want to damage this thing. I know these are just cheap and people say they're really junky. So I don't want to do anything that might damage it. I probably damage it anyway, but I'm going to try to avoid damaging it if I can. And this diode here that I'm using, um, it's rated at... Uh, uh, 60, 60 amps, 50 volts. This is just stuff I had. <laughs> it might be 30 years old. So that's what we got going on. I think this should be turbine, turbine, not turbine. <laughs> and like I say, these capacitors here, they're in parallel, not, not series. But anyway, that's what's going on. And I'll probably leave this hooked up because it seems to be working for me. I'll be testing this out to see if it keeps working. I don't know yet. I got to clean up this mess of wires too. It's kind of pretty messy. Some of these are just for this inverter where I'm taking a load off of it. Sometimes I hook up a, a light to it. I had a heat lamp on there, 125 watt heat lamp. That was a little too much. We had quite a bit of wind last few days and I hooked up a 20 yeah 125 watt heat lamp but now I just got a 60 watt light bulb in there so I can take some load off I'll probably hook up some 12 volt lighting in here that's the two circuits I got working for me now and I'll see how they hold up I think it's a good idea to have a switch where I can just switch off that wind turbine bring it to a stop I'll have to find out how this uh, Viver wind turbine will hold up to that. I know those blades are just kind of cheap plastic. And if it was blowing, you know, 40 miles an hour, you go to switch it off, that'd be quite a shock to them maybe and it might break. But I'll find out. Right now, I have a 60-watt incandescent bulb burning off some of that wind power through an inverter I got hooked up to the battery. Now, if you want to stick around, I'm going to head outside and I'll show a little bit what I got going on with my horizontal cup bladed wind turbine. And this is my experimental cup blade horizontal turbine with wind deflectors. What I have rigged up now for a drive is a bike chain running around a little groove I have here in the outside circumference. It's just a bike chain or a bicycle chain. And I have hooked up my Whisper 600 wind turbine alternator here and a bike sprocket on there. Don't have the right sprocket on there. It needs to be geared up some more, but it is powering right now some lanterns here. I don't know if you can see them too good. But it is working. I need to gear this up some more or something, get a different sprocket on there. 
I just got this temporarily mounted on here while I'm experimenting with it. But this is kind of an interesting project I've been working on. Yeah, I think I need to gear this up a little bit more. It's got plenty of torque, and that chain is not slipping. What I did is I put some belt dressing in this groove there that the chain runs in, and it doesn't seem to be slipping at all. So it's just a friction on there, and I think it's about a 8 to 1 gear ratio with that uh, sprocket I have on here. And the noise you hear is from the chain. This is pretty smooth running. And that wind turbine up there too, that gives me a little bit of power each day into that battery. At night too, that's what's nice. Things cranking up pretty good now. Just experimenting with this, nothing is set for good yet. Both of them are on. I don't have the uh, meters on it right now. I don't think it's real efficient. I think it needs to be geared up higher. Thank you. 